Hello, and welcome to my channel, Psycho's Diversions. I am Psycho, and today I am making a new video, Things You Should Know. This video is going to be titled, How to Write a Check. And I think everyone should know how, um, although I believe checks are out of date, um, and have way too much of your personal information on them, uh, in the end people still use them and I feel like it's very important that everyone actually knows how to write a check. And so we are just going to hop right into it here. I don't want this video to be super long. Uh, so we're going to start with um, the upper left hand corner of the check. Uh, up here, uh, right now it says just bank. I'm using a nice generic blank check for this. But generally, if you've ordered a check from a bank, up in the left-hand corner uh, at the very top is going to be your name, your address, and sometimes your phone number right under there if you've allowed the bank to include that. Um, uh if you have not had them include your phone number, sometimes if you give it to a store to purchase something, they will ask for your phone number. They might also ask for your driver's license ID um, because checks are, it's very easy to write a bad check. Uh, all it takes is for you to write a check for way more, like a way higher amount than you have in the account the check is tied to. And the company would, if they just take it and don't scan it or anything, would have no way of actually knowing. Uh, and so sometimes they will ask for that information uh, in case you find it weird if they ever do ask you for that information. Uh, our next topic is uh, your check number. This is for your reference. Um, anyone but you is not really going to care about it. Um, up here in the top right hand corner is the first check number. So this is check number 25 out of the checkbook. It is also down here at the end of this line. And that's just so you can keep track of uh, what check it is and what you wrote it for. So you in a book or in a uh, used to we kept books to keep this in but just like a little notebook you can write down the check number what you wrote the check for and the amount that you wrote the check for um, and that would just keep your files uh, in order in case you ever needed to know for some reason um, next is our dateline uh, right here um, there are lots of ways you can write it I like a good six digit date um, a six-digit date is generally acceptable everywhere. So today's date for me is actually the 27th. So I would write 012721. And you can put a slash in between those or a dash. I actually don't. I like to just write them right next to each other. Just confuse the crap out of everybody. Um, next is the recipient line. Uh, I've got it written down as the recipient line, but it is the pay to the order of line. And that is where you're going to write who the check is to. Uh, so that is this right here. God, that was terrible. I'm awful at drawing. Don't ever ask me to draw you nothing. So this line is where you would, if you were giving a person money, you would write their name, or if it was a company, say you went to, I don't know, your local gas station, like the Kangaroo, or as they like to call it now, their rebrand, Circle K, um, you would write, pay to the order of Circle K, right there. Our next order of business is the payment amount box. Pretty self-explanatory is the box right over here. And you're going to want to write just the number, and you will include your decimal. So if you were paying to the, if you were paying three hundred dollars to someone, you would do. Let's see if I can do this. I'm not gonna be able to do it. So three hundred. Oh Lord, what am I doing? And you put decimal, 
and two zeros. There we go. 300. Nice and easy. So, then we have, excuse me, uh, the dollars line. Uh, so, this is where you're going to put the amount. So, right here, and when I say put the amount, you are going to spell it out. So, you would spell out in words 300, and then I actually like to do, uh, so if there was no change, I would write no 100s after the word 300. Um, and if it was like 30 cents, I would write 30 slash 100. And that just makes it easy for people to see because it's difficult to write that. At least in such a small spot. Generally, um, your bank information would also be down here, right under this part. And it would just be like the name of your bank. And uh, sometimes it's location slash address, but more than likely it's just going to be the name. Um, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Uh, next is the memo line. The memo line is once again just for you. It's not for anyone else. Uh, so this is just where you would put what the check was for. So the pay to the order line would be like, uh, say you wrote a check to your uncle. We're going to call him Jim Bob. Everybody loves Jim Bob. So he needs $300. Why? Because you live with him and he expects it as rent money. So you are paying Jim Bob $300 as rent money. So in the memo line, you could write rent. And that is a reminder to you that you wrote this check for rent. Now, if the only checks you write to Jim Bob are for rent, you may not need a memo, but it's generally customary that people fill it out even though you don't have to. Then slightly to the right of that is your signature line. I know cursive uh, is not used a whole lot amongst younger people. I'm not even sure it's still taught in school. But generally, you would sign your name in cursive on this line to authorize that this check is valid and good for use. That is basically you stating that for no reason is it a bad check, and yes, indeed, you can use it to pay for the product you're paying for. And once you sign that, uh, should it bounce, which means that you have not enough money in the account to make up the amount that is on the check, it gives anyone who received that the right to um, basically file a police report against you. Um, and depending on the amount, you may simply be fined a ticket or you may have to serve jail time. Uh, it will generally depend on your circumstances. Then we have the bank routing number. This is generally only important to the bank and other banks. Um, the people you're giving it to aren't usually going to worry about this. The only time you will need the routing number is if you work at a place that does direct deposits. They will ask for your routing number and your account number, and that way, with those two numbers, they can send your money straight to your bank account. Very convenient, right? And then the last thing on the check we're going to go over today is right here. It's your account number. Um, that is the number for your specific account. No one else's account will have that number. And... Uh, like, I don't know, I cannot remember that many numbers in a row. It baffles me, but if you walk into a bank and you tell them that you don't have, like, uh, you know, you don't have a check or something for them to access the account with, they'll be like, oh, well, do you know your account number? And I'm like, oh, you mean those 32,000 numbers down there? No, why would I, why would I remember that? Um, no, I, I don't. Um, so generally you would not need that unless once again you were asked for it by the bank because for some reason they expect you to remember it or 
your employer needed it in order to provide you with a direct deposit. Um, that has been my tutorial on how to write a check and the information that is on said check. I hope that it has been informative. And if you have enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would appreciate it if you went down there and hit that thumbs up button under the video and liked it. Uh, that'll let me know, YouTube know, and other viewers know that my content is, uh, for lack of a better word, decent. And um, yeah, I would, in all honesty, generally appreciate it. I hope y'all have had a wonderful time. Thank you. Bye-bye.